but it's just do what's best for you. And maybe that includes not going to McDonald's every day. Hello. And tonight I'm speaking with Jacob and his mom, Rebecca. And more Jacob than Rebecca, but hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the star so, of the show here. Yeah, Jacob's totally the star um, for many reasons because this is his interview and he's going to tell us a little bit about his life. Um, but Rebecca's going to start and give a little introduction to this, why we're talking to Jacob tonight. All right. So this is my son, Jacob. He is one half of a set of twins. He's got a twin sister. Um and Jacob is high functioning autism and is on a low carb ketogenic diet that we've used to mostly help with, uh, cause he was, uh, well on his way to being quite obese, um, as a child. Um, he's actually, we did an article on our family. It's in La Guia Keto. Oh yeah. I think I sent you the article it's cause it's in Spanish. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I can't read Spanish. <laughs> I know. I know you told me that afterwards. I was like, oh, well, she speaks it. You're like, I only conversationally. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, it, you know, talks about that. Um, but, yeah. So, we've been treating him with this since about 2021 ish, Jacob. Was that 2021? It was nearing the summer of eight grade so this is Doctor. it was eight it was eight because okay. you would send me to school with like keto yogurt and a salad okay that sounds fun yeah it took us a while <laughs> it took us a while because he had food aversions so you can you guys can mm, talk no, about the food about aversions also. That we, yep because no, he can tell you yeah, because he can tell you about like what it felt like and his symptoms and things like that. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to hear. But first, I'm curious. Um, I just am curious. Like, what do you like doing as a 17 year old boy? Well, playing video games. Uh, you know, I was gonna say because you got, the, <laughs> you got the you got the headphones and you had the OBS screen happening. What video games? Tell me. <laughs> Mainly Minecraft. In Roblox, and that's oh, weird okay. for a seventeen-year-old because usually you get into first-person shooter games. Like I don't really mess with them, but you know, it's just I really only stick with like one or two games at a time. Okay, I understand. My uh, my niece is also 17, 16 or seventeen. She plays Minecraft, creates villages and worlds. I that's what you do in Minecraft, right? Um, that's one thing you can do in Minecraft. You can oh, either great. make villages or burn them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so my son is also Jacob, and we were talking last week, and he's seven years old. And he's always saying how he wants to play Minecraft. And and he's, like, obsessed with Minecraft, but he doesn't even know what it is because <laughs> we haven't played it. But there you go, two Jacobs that love Minecraft. So in addition to video games, what else do you do you like to do? Um... Well, I run whenever there's the chance I can get. Like, I did a 5K, like, oh. last Saturday, I think. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. What I didn't get a, I don't know what place I was. I didn't get the best time. I only got, like, what was it, 26 minutes? Something like that. Yeah. Wow. That was probably my worst 5K, although I did take a wrong turn. So... That maybe could have impacted 6K. the time. So maybe you got a six K in with the wrong turn. <laughs> like more more time running. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Um, now I wanted to ask about autism because I've only met a few people, but they were at like a very different place on the autism spectrum, like needed full time care. Um, so I was curious, like for you, how does that manifest itself? Um, so this is, it got, essentially whenever I swapped over to the diet, it got a lot better. So yeah. I can tell you the before and after effects of it. Great. I'd before love to I got it. on, before I was on the diet, I was, um, what was it? I really didn't have any social skills. 
I was super emotional. Like I would cry over the littlest things, not really my best moments, but. Mm -hmm. And my stemming was definitely a lot worse. Okay. So yeah, it's like I couldn't control my emotions and this was before puberty. So. Okay. Like that was kind of an issue because like if if you're going through puberty you at least have an excuse to let out your emotions sure because because you know you're going through that stage mm -hmm. in life that you just yep. really it's either you can or can't control but at least you have an excuse for it before puberty no you don't have an excuse for it and your puberty was delayed a little bit too yeah i didn't hit puberty till what was it 14 it was it was after the diet you were delayed until after about five months on the diet. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because that hit me at around 11. <laughs> well, boys, it could, be tip it could be typical for boys to be a little bit later than girls, but he wasn't showing the normal signs that he should have been showing at his age and all of his okay. peers had like passed him up. So it was, this was just like a benefit. This wasn't, we didn't treat him with the diet like for mm -hmm. that. Sure. It just happened that like within five months, it was like, boom, puberty done. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, it was oh, crazy. Wow. That's crazy. Because um, he grew up and become much taller than me, which he loves to talk to me about all the time. <laughs> I'm also oh. Taller than dad. oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I was taller than my mom at 12. So I love that. I understand. And my son, Jacob, he'll be taller than me very soon. I think in like two years, he's going to be taller than me. And he's seven. <laughs> My brothers are very tall. Um, can you explain for me like what you were saying stemming is and like how it was before and how it is now? You were getting into a little bit about how the diet has helped you, but can you just explain? Because there's probably some people that are going to watch this that don't know what that means. Um, so stemming is, you, you might, okay, first off, it's not spelled S-T-E-M. Yeah. It's I. No, okay. no E, it's just another I. Okay. So if you ever want to look it up, there you go. But the simple, the simple explanation is basically, you just feel like you have to get something out there. So you'll run around the house. You'll some people flap their hands. Some people, I'm not sure if this is a thing, Spin. but like weird head movements. Spinning is oh. one of them. Okay. And yeah, all of that. Uh, so before the diet. Like you can tell, I'm in, I'm just spinning in the chair right now. So before the diet, it's just like I didn't care what other people thought, whether I stemmed or not. Okay. In public or not, so it's just yeah. like, so it's like yeah. definitely embarrassing myself out there because like normal people don't really do it on that much of a level. Yeah. I'm on the big screen. You are because you're you're the guest today. <laughs> Yay. Are you comfortable with that? If not, I can yeah. change it again. Okay, cool. Okay. Tell me about stemming and embarrassing yourself in public. And I want to say that at least like, you know, you're embarrassing yourself in public, like to be self-aware. Yeah. Well, I'm aware now. I wasn't oh, okay. aware back then. Oh, okay. So it's like, I would just do it and it yeah. would be not really the best thing in the world okay. to do. Okay. So like I'll do it in school, like when we're shopping, yeah, et cetera. And it was just not the best thing to do. Okay. Now I still stem, but like for me, definitely, I don't do it in public anymore. Okay. And if I feel like it, like I'll just let it run through my mind and not come out through movement. Right. Oh, interesting. And definitely a trigger for that is music. Okay. So, so if you're I, listening to music, you'll feel the need to do that. Yes. Okay. I don't think I've ever stemmed without, I barely ever stem without music. Let me reward that. Okay. And, and usually it's like, there's some idea in your mind that you're just thinking about and you're just, I guess that's just a way of planning it all out. I don't know. Okay. Like you have an idea that you want to do something and then you need some movement in your body to help you make like that idea. Oh, okay. Okay. And do when you have that 
urge and you need to do that, do you feel bad physically if you can't? And do you feel better afterwards? Do you understand my no. question? Oh, okay. You don't feel bad physically. I, I was just wondering because mm. I was trying to understand some stuff. You feel like some compulsion. Oh, okay. When you don't do it. But okay. there's no relievement factor if you do it. Oh, okay. Like I afterwards. Understand. Okay. Because during it, you just don't understand really what you're okay. doing it for. Oh, okay. So at least now you feel like you have some control over that if it's yeah. a compulsion. Oh, okay. Why and, you do you know my mom? Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, I was curious if like, why do you think changing your diet just from your viewpoint, like would help with that? I don't know, actually. Okay. Um, if you ask my mom, she would say uh, bad chemicals in foods <laughs> and sugar, evil. <laughs> sugar is evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Rem switching the diet, you remove a lot, nearly all of your sugar. Yeah, totally. totally. But I'm not sure how sugar does that. I don't really know the sciences of food. My parents are begging me to do the diet. Now, we have two different viewpoints on this. I mm -hmm. think I was forced into it. My mom thinks that I agreed to it. Okay. And I'm not sure. We're not sure which one's correct or not. So we just kind of stick to what we believe. But okay. it definitely helped me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know why it helped me, well, at least physically, but not mentally. Because I don't oh, know okay. the sciences behind it. I was just, okay, I'm just going to do this, stick to it, and it worked. Nice. And you've lost a lot of weight also. Uh, yeah, I went from, it's like you may think that losing 20 pounds isn't that big of a deal, but then That's you also have deal. to consider the height difference <laughs> because yeah. I went through puberty. Sure. Um, I went from 5'1", 140 pounds to 5'7", 120 pounds. Okay. So I no, grew six huge. inches and lost right. 20 pounds. Right. No, that's that's huge because I'm sure like you're going through puberty, you're putting on muscle, like all these things are happening. So I'm sure you're putting on muscle, right? Rebecca, are you putting on think, muscle? <laughs> I don't think I put on muscle. <laughs> I, you would think that he would put on muscle. But, However, you know. he went... He became because he's long distance running. Mm. He's kind mm -hmm. of a string bean. Oh, okay. Hey, string bean is way better than short and fat and sick. <laughs> no, yes. string bean is better than dumpling. <laughs> dumpling. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I used to be a dumpling also. Maybe I've still fit <laughs> oompa loompa category. <laughs> you are not fit. <laughs> Do you know what an oompa loompa is? No. Oh, he's got to see the Wizard of Oz. Oh, my goodness. It's these little creatures. They're these like little people. And oh, I sound so politically incorrect. <laughs> it's okay. It's, is he Google? Are you Googling it right now? Yeah. No, Oompa Loompa. Oh, I'm totally confused. No, what, Willy Wonka. Willy dude? Wonka. I literally said Wizard of Oz. Willy Wonka. Yeah, it's it's Willy factor. Wonka. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, uh, when you're done, I'll ask my next, my next one. Oh, well, I'm done. Oh, okay. Um, I know that you say that, uh, your mom like forced you into eating this way, but now that you're in, but you have your own, like she feels you guys agreed, but like newly, like right now, do you feel that you're doing it on your own self-determinism because you see how it's helped you? Half and half. Half and half. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's a little bit better. So Yeah. Her and I have completely different views on how we should like do this thing. Yeah. Mom thinks, oh, I, I should dedicate every day to eating right. And I'm like, please let me have some days where like I can enjoy a bag of popcorn if I wish. Because like recently we went to see Inside Out 2. It was a good mm -hmm. movie. Nice. It wasn't another Disney failure. Oh, good. That's nice. <laughs> I can take my kids but, to see it. Yeah. And I kept asking her popcorn 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 she said no 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 yeah why did i say no well because it's bad for me i get it because corn bad yeah it was the seed oils the seed, seed oils, oils are it's bad. because they're full of like 
Like seed oil's bad. Like toxic, sure. It's like toxic sludge on top of corn. I know, but like it's not like I'm eating it. It's not like we go to the movies every day, every week. Was... I'm a bad mom. I don't give him toxic sludge. It's okay. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I make popcorn sometimes and I don't want to trigger anybody and it's delicious, but I don't use the toxic sludge and I <laughs> I don't feel good after I eat it. I feel bad inflammation or it ruins my sleep. Uh, sometimes it just makes my stomach feel bad, but I did have popcorn. I tried some at the movie theater and it, it tastes like toxic sludge. It tastes disgusting. You wouldn't have liked it. I'm not just saying that, you know, when you're like lying to your kids, you're not going to like this. This is gross. No, it actually was totally gross. So don't feel like you missed out, <laughs> please. Oh, I know what I missed out. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've had that popcorn more recently than you think. Oh, okay. He's are you sneaking popcorn and not telling your mom? His dad no, when for their birthday they uh went out and James, you know, took him to the movies and they got popcorn. Nice. All right. Well, there you go. Did it taste like not, toxic? Sludge? It's not all the time. No. Though, so. It tasted <laughs> it tasted good. Let me okay. just let me just reiterate that like maybe switching diets is not hard not easy because uh the bad food tastes good. You're right. So it's like, yeah, I'd still love to get French fries. Yeah, I'd still love to eat candy, and you know, still love to eat garbage because it tastes good, right? Mm -hmm. But like, it's just a sacrifice you gotta make. Sure, sure, I agree. Positive <laughs> messages. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you completely because if I eat all that stuff that you were just talking about, I feel terrible. And, um, you know, I, I might be like emotional and like start like, you know, you're talking about crying. I used to cry like randomly uh, and I didn't know why. And I would think it was some reason. And then I stopped eating sugar and carbohydrates and garbage. And I, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my gosh, I feel like normal. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, what do you think the hardest thing about this was though? Like changing, switching over your diet, finding out what foods to eat. Okay. The food aversions. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically like what happened was I don't actually remember when the switch happened, okay. but basically when I was a very itty bitty child, like two, three to two, four, three, four, three to four. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember any of those times. All I remember is the time where I hit my head against the radiator. That's all I remember. I was stemming, by the way. Aww. I was pretending I was in a thing of Mario Kart. Oh. So yeah, uh, had to get a staple there. Rough on your head. Yep, on my head. Right here. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't know if I have the scar, but I'm not willing to find it. Basically. I used to eat like everything, like spaghetti, pizza. I'm not sure if burgers is on there because like what everything. Child, what you, what you child? Everything. What three year old eats burgers? <laughs> what a fast food baby eats burgers? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I get those, and then yeah. <laughs> they weigh like 200 pounds at eight years old, dog. So yeah, no, never. I don't get why you would ever feed a three year old a burger, but yeah, all that <laughs> all that stuff. And then one night it just. Okay. Then... He would vomit. He would oh, gag wow. and vomit. Like the oh, smell wow. of spaghetti and pizza made him gag and vomit. And so but basically. You ate it. No, before no, it's like all of a sudden it was like a overnight switch. All of a sudden it was, it was there. And then food started dropping off his palate. Like he couldn't handle them. He'd gag and vomit. Oh, yeah, wow. they all definitely played a part in my food aversions because, okay. yeah, no one does that overnight. Right, right. That just doesn't happen normally. Sure. Um, Rebecca, can I ask your mom a question? And sure. you can answer also. Is like, and I hope to, I don't sound stupid, but is something trigger something that creates the autism? Like, does something happen or is it always there? Like, because he's eating one day. Jacob, you're eating like burgers, French fries, whatever, even though it's terrible, terrible, probably foods. But then the next day you can't. I, um, we don't so know. You, you don't know. Yeah. Okay. So you're born with autism, but okay. like things can make it worse throughout your life. Like I remember that before I went on the diet, 
every single time we move locations because we're in the army like mm -hmm. i would regress a lot like okay. everything any mm -hmm. progress i made would just go backwards all right okay and that's actually what happened in maryland so what mm -hmm. happened was we moved from texas to maryland when while we were in texas my sister and i were potty trained like we could use the toilet on our on our own but the second we moved to maryland mm. it just was same all gone day. the exact same day they they oh. were regressed and they started soiling their diapers again okay. or like just soil, soiling their underwear so we had to go sure. backwards yeah and okay. so that's actually what prompted mom and dad to check us out and turns out we had autism and okay. we were told we were going to be low to medium functioning okay so and both you and your sister are high functioning yeah okay well i mean that's a plus for sure i you have conquered a... the system good <laughs> that's great My and life i'm happy is a movie. your life is a movie it would be a pretty boring movie <laughs> shake up <laughs> I think your life is very interesting. You get to move all, all over this place, these cool places. I'm sorry if it triggers stuff and is upsetting sometimes. So, but it's better now, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, still movie makes me upset. You have to say goodbye to a house you've known for three years. You have to say goodbye to the neighboring area, the friends, right. the yeah. place, the connections, the places where you'd make connections. That was a big one. I okay. didn't really like the move from Pennsylvania to Washington because uh, like I was involved in a lot of things. I was involved with what's, what is it? Like there was this place called the game table cafe mm -hmm. where I would like play with other kids with Pokemon cards specifically, and then also yeah. play against them in Smash Bros Ultimate. And then on Fridays I would go to the youth center for dodgeball. And the youth center was also just like a place where I could chill out, make friends, and okay. they would host events and it would all be cool. I understand. Yeah, it can be rough. Oh, yeah, I had to leave that all that behind once again. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't understand what it would be like to be a uh, an army child. I don't want to say army brat. <laughs> an army child. Like the, a military person's child. Well, brat's an acronym, right? Is it? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I think it just you're an army brat. Oh, no, you know? it's not an acronym. Oh, um, we we segued a little bit. Could we talk about the food aversions then? So, like, how did you overcome that? And like, what do you eat now? Because at one point you could eat everything, and now then the next day was terrible. How did you? How do you hit, deal with that on the keto diet? So, I never actually conquered the food aversions. Okay. I never. There's only one one food that i went from hating to loving and that is bacon okay which just so happens to be my everyday breakfast that's awesome and i love bacon yeah i love to i love bacon too mom we need more bacon i forgot <laughs> we i forgot to tell you that we don't have any more <laughs> get on that mom <laughs> i need to get more hours for my permit i can drive to the store True there, you there you go. So Tomorrow. what else do you eat? Um, so as of right now, as in like if you ask me what I would eat today, yeah, it is just bacon and it is just chicken. Okay. Like my mom buys chicken thighs and I would put them in an air fryer, put salt, garlic on it, cook it, eat it, and then all is well. So it's just air fried garlic powder chicken right okay it's and bacon pretty good and so bacon. you don't eat eggs or anything no no oh okay no. sorry sorry um, i don't want let's not even talk about it <laughs> well actually yeah let's talk about it <laughs> okay so a while ago before i went on the diet yeah my mom and dad desperately tried me or tried to get me to like bacon and eggs at the same time i could not hmm. for some whatever reason it was stand eggs i just could not eat eggs bacon i eventually got used to basically 
This was before the diet, so okay. I would get to have maple syrup with it. I still struggled heavily with the eggs, okay. but the bacon, I eventually got used to it, got used to it, and now it's just one of my favorite foods now. That's great. That's good news. That's really good news. Okay, so, but you, you don't eat anything else? You just eat chicken and bacon? Well, my mom gets me these protein snacks. I have the wrapper here, uh, these schoolyard snacks. Oh, okay. But I What's really that? only eat the peanut butter ones now. It's like a protein cereal. It's got five grams of carbs and thir no, not thirteen, fifteen grams of protein, and it is flavored with allulose. Okay, oh, is that the schoolyard snacks are yeah. um, a whey protein base? Oh, okay. They're relatively clean. They do have a little bit of sunflower oil in them, but it's like supposedly the one that's better. Yeah. The better bad choice. Um, but I got them like they're peanut butter flavored, you know, there, there you go. Okay. So you I need mean, a couple things. Cause I was thinking you're yeah. like, sound like a carnivore if you're just eating bacon and chicken. And well, he eats nuts. He eats mixed oh, nuts. Oh, okay. It's just, we don't have any at the moment. Literally, literally telling you what he is eating today. So oh. in the context, <laughs> Jacob, tell her in a typical day during school, what were you eating? You're like, getting up and you're eating your bacon. What are you taking for lunch? Uh, I will take this peanut butter jelly sandwich, which you may raise like three red flags. Oh, no. PBJ. Bad. Anyways, so basically what we use for the bread, because we know the bread's the probably the worst part. It's my mom makes egg white bread. What is it? Okay. It's and it's an adapted like yeah, and it's adapted from like one of Maria Emmerich's recipes. I've oh, just okay. tweaked I've tweaked the uh, recipe for a texture. Like I would get feedback every time I made it. I would give feedback from him, and he would say, "Well, the taste is off," or like the texture is off, or something. Mm -hmm. So eventually, I got it to where we I've got it down to where it's just right for his texture. Well, for okay. a PB and J sandwich, because you, mm -hmm. you know the peanut butter and jelly alter it. Yes. But I still would struggle with eating the bread with any other product. Oh, yes. okay. And the jelly is like just low calorie, like sugar free or something. It's no sugar added. No sugar added. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like the uh, the good good jam or the good good jelly. It's, it's a good good jam. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a decent brand. It's pretty clean. So, uh, mom, because I don't know if Jacob tracks this, does he eat like 50 or less carbohydrates a day? Is that what you're, you aim for? The last time that I tracked him and it's been a hot minute. So the last time I tracked him, he was around like 150, 160 grams of protein around the same amount of fat. And his max carbs was somewhere between 45 and 50. Okay. And that's, and that's total. Okay. Well, yeah, that seems pretty ketogenic. If it you're is. otherwise healthy. And I will say that he, um, he does still eat fruit sometimes. Like his favorite is watermelon. You know, okay. I'll get it for him sometimes. Okay. You know, strawberries. We keep strawberries. We keep blueberries in the house. Um, they like yeah but he he's metabolically healthy he can yeah he can eat it. you can eat that yeah. stuff sure um in the last so you've been doing this for three years eating this way for three years basically more or less 2021 mm, yeah have you gone mom or jacob do you remember an incident where you went completely off diet and how that affected you if that one happened? time all right what happened what did it you was, eat and what happened it was for three days and it was for my 14th birthday. And what did I you just, eat? I kept eating chicken tenders and fries. And what was what else did I get? I think cake? I got pancakes. Yeah, cake, pancakes. For like three days because we had like a beach vacation for our birthday. Fun. And but what happened? Like, did you notice anything happen? Like your autism symptoms get worse or did you feel bad physically did anything happen mm, like that no oh okay what i 
So I think I wasn't even on the keto diet long enough to start feeling the positive effect. It was like two weeks after I started the diet where I had those three days, but then immediately mm. I went back on the diet. Mm. And then okay. that, that was when I kept getting it consistent and consistent. And then All the right. only time, the only time recently after I had gotten something that like, you know, you probably shouldn't was after I had hit my weight goal of 120 pounds. So okay. my dad drove me to sheets and we got chicken tenders, fries, and uh, slushy. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And did you, did that trigger anything? Like any bad reactions physically or mentally? Mm, I wouldn't say so. Okay. I feel okay. like. I, I, no, have I, to inter <laughs> I have to interject <laughs> because sometimes after races, he'll go get Chick-fil-A. I love and when he gets a Chick-fil-A meal and then gets like um a milkshake with it, later that later, just later, he's like, My stomach don't feel so good. So literally, I don't remember this. <laughs> I was gonna ask you, what you are I selective feel? memory loss. Okay, <laughs> maybe it was because I had too much. Maybe it was because I had too much because I've actually just, for whatever reason, my mom thinks it's because I'm exercising less. That's probably what it is, but I've just been eating less in general. There you go. Like I went from three meals to on average one and a half. Oh, wow. That's good. That's but he's not running every day right now. Mm. When he runs every day, he gets, oh, yeah. he's, he gets super hungry. Sure. Yeah. I understand. Totally makes sense. Jacob, do we cover we covered everything about the food aversion? So basically, anything else you won't eat except the few things we covered. A lot. A lot. Yeah, you basically won't eat. We covered like the snacks anything you showed with me. Cheese, steak. I also don't know that many foods, so it's like. Oh, okay. That's cool. No worries. Um, but you will do you will down a milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's fine. Why not? It's why not? It's just it's melt it's just ice cream, but melted. Exactly. And like it's who delicious. doesn't like ice cream? Except no the one. vegans out there. No, they eat like a fake version of ice cream. <laughs> they still yeah. like it. It's just yeah, that's version. why we call them fake. <laughs> um okay, so you mentioned positives. What are positives that you experienced eating this way? Um, I lost weight. I mm -hmm. grew taller. I got a better voice because I was a squeaker back then. Okay. I, I grow facial hair. I talk better. Great. I think better. I... Um... I guess Social, based off socially of, you're better too. I mean, I guess that just falls under talking better, but I can also do sports better. Like my hand-eye coordination got better because I know that wasn't the best. Great. So Is like, that an autism thing or like just not exercising and practicing thing? Okay, hand that's an coordination autism. is an autism okay. thing. Okay. I remember not to go too long on a tangent, but back in Pennsylvania, right? We started mm -hmm. Team Blue to help other kids with their, I guess, all mental disabilities, or was it just autism? Mostly for autism. Yeah, so basically we would have fine motor skills. Hmm. What's the other one called? And gross motor skills. Gross motor skills. So I understand the fine motor skills. What's the gross motor skills? Fine motor skills like being able to like write, right, and use your fingers. Okay. And was, gross motor skills is like being able to like move your move mm. everything around. So like your legs, okay. your arms. I was gonna flail around my arm, not my arms, my legs for the bit, but no. <laughs> so, so like your that's like agility. So we did agility training, learning okay. how to throw a ball, catch a ball, ladder, like jumping like between the ladder rungs, like on a mm. ground ladder, okay. being able to like kick a soccer ball, 
like different yeah. things like that. You're working on hand-eye coordination and just like spatial awareness mm. and how to move your body through space and time. I know that sounds really hokey. No, I understand. I guess. I'm going to have to ask my mom a question after the interview. Oh, okay. You don't want to ask her now? Is it not related? <laughs> it's not appropriate. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Okay. But it basically has to do with how my sister and I aren't identical twins. I'll keep it at that much. <laughs> well, I just I just think it's quite rare that we both have the same genetic deformity of autism mm. when we're not identical twins. Oh, I don't know if that's if that's no. That I has to know. be incredibly rare. The fact that we it both is, have it. it is, it is rare. They did a study on it. There's a TED talk on it. Oh, okay. Because like identical twins, rare. yeah, you would understand. It's, it's more, more, yeah, it's more, it's more prevalent in identical twins, less prevalent in uh, fraternal. fraternal. Oh, okay. It's really, we, it's really odd that they would have the same genetic mutation if it was a genetic hmm. thing. We just haven't had them tested to find out why. And oh, okay. I mean, because what's it going to do? Yeah, like, I understand. So you cannot reverse autism. You can? No, you, you can't. can't. Oh, you can't. But you can There's just no way like, to remove it. Okay. You have to just fight with it. it you, you seem like you're doing a good job fighting it, fighting against it, conquering. Yeah. Conquering life. So that's that's good. Conquering life. I don't know what I want to do with my life. <laughs> You're going to be a gamer and you're going to be a YouTuber. No. no, no. <laughs> He's already got a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, nice. no, but like I don't ever upload on it. Oh, well, there you go. Asking, did you have a hard time making friends? Having um, or no? That is one of the things, yeah. But then okay. also, like if you see that, how do I put this? Like if someone's not wanting to tolerate you yeah and they're trying their best to just distance themselves from you mm. like you won't notice that and so you'll come off as clingy in mm. which you'll actually cling on to them too that's another part okay but yeah okay all right they and miss the social cues they miss okay. the facial like facial expressions the small things that we notice and like man that person does not like us they mm. don't they don't see that it's like okay. they, they have to be taught that mm. um, and they just kind of have to cognitively learn how to do that. Okay. Yeah, I can understand. I, I just want to let you know, though, autistic or not, some kids can be total jerks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just so you know, you probably do know that. Like, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about like other kids in relationship to you. <laughs> kids mm. can be mean sometimes. And yep. uh, even like young kids, they just kind of say what's on their mind and it can come across maybe kind of mean. That's also and because young kids are dumb. <laughs> exactly. They're... I think they don't understand like empathy. You get that. I think as you get older empathy and like understanding of like another human being and what they're going through. You don't understand that when you're a child. Yeah. But yeah. they're also extremely unintelligent. <laughs> the part, the part of the brain that develops critical thinking skills, which makes you, better at decisions yeah it's also like right here i think because the brain develops backwards i had no idea uh, look how smart your son is <laughs> it only develops when you're 25 or 26. so are you smart or dumb then per your per your understanding of what your brain development <laughs> it depends on what you're asking me i'm smart in i'm just teasing like you, if you yeah, told me to make a smart. life decision right now yeah, I would probably make 20 wrong decisions and then stop deciding before I make the right one. All right. When I was talking to you and your sister in the hall, I wasn't there in the hall. And she said that there were benefits to autism. You said there were not. Yeah, there's no benefits to having autism. Okay. It's basically with autism, basically I've always struggled with talking, connections, speaking, Speaking again, um, a lot. I mean, your food aversions was a lot. Food aversions. Texture aversions. I still have those. Mm -hmm. 
texture versions, mm. fader versions, any other yeah. any other versions, hypersensitivity, which can either be a good or a bad thing depending on how you view it. But okay. basically you cower you cower at large noises mm. and bad smells and you go into overdrive and that's not good because mm. I remember I was watching this one YouTube video by Visual Venture. Mm -hmm. And he said something about how he felt bad for the parents who had to take care of an autistic kid, something along mm -hmm. those lines. Mm -hmm. And there's this one common thread on the video. Where it's just a bunch of people with autism saying how they felt offended by that. Yeah. And I didn't get it because they were talking about like how the appropriate, how like masking is, is like, well, first off, I, barely know what masking is but I have, from what i understand it's like you know stemming and doing all the weird stuff and like like i talked about earlier getting into overdrive over senses masking sure. is just basically hiding that all right mm, and they're okay. all saying that that is all that is masking is bad because it leads to depression and suicide and heavy mm. topics yeah and i was like I but you have to and I don't I don't get it because like I don't get those thoughts whenever I act basically socially I try to act socially normal at least mm -hmm. I definitely can come across as different but you know okay. it's just a weird perk but they were talking I, I keep losing my train of thought but basically they're saying masking is bad and oh I got it back now um, basically you need, you have to do it so you can be socially acceptable so you can land a job, make the, mm. make the connections that you have to do. It's just something that you have to fight. And they're all just like nearly everyone in that comment section was just like, oh, should we just in this society, we just have to be ourselves. Okay. I understand. I have this very weird take yeah don't be a hundred percent yourself because okay. like you gotta have at least some flexibility okay because uh, definitely a very big part of it is you never like if you're in two friend groups friend group a friend group b you never act the same in both okay there's a reason why they're separate okay and this is all actually totally honestly very enlightening because I don't know. I I don't know what it's like to be in your shoes. And now at least I understand a little bit more. And I can understand from your viewpoint why you wouldn't want to. I don't want to sound like a jerk, by the way. Be be weird in front of people. You want to be like, look and yeah, sound like socially normal. acceptable, normal. Yeah. And I also understand there's things that you have to do so that you can deal with your own symptoms also. So it's cool that you're like self-aware of that and you're like okay i need to do this but i'm gonna do it at home or in some place where people don't think that i'm just like a weirdo or whatever so yeah. i understand that so um okay so do you think other teens or kids would benefit from eating like similar to how you eat uh what do you mean like like keto like autism like all autistic kids or like all kids like first all kids and then maybe autistic kids um all kids definitely in our america society we may want to put them on this diet for obvious reasons look at the majority of people very mm -hmm. scary sure very very scary explain explain what you mean it's okay yeah. to uh it. they're mm, to put this lightly, they are afraid of one object, and that is a scale. <laughs> and stairs. So, do you see this at school? Or, like, at Walmart? Or everywhere? everywhere. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Basically, okay. Uh, 70 to 80% of America is overweight. Right. And that's the majority. That is a bad thing. Now, yeah. Why is that a bad thing? I'm test. I'm quizzing you. Why is that a bad thing? Um, you become more temporary than usual. <laughs> like you don't live as long. Yes. If you're if you're so overweight. Oh, okay. 
You can't yeah, I like, I like how he put that. He become more temporary. <laughs> that is not my joke. Oh my God. My, this video is absolutely going to get taken down. So many people are going to have problems <laughs> with it. And I love that. <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, there's this YouTuber named Decept. I got the joke from him. Oh, okay. Basically, he was just mocking uh, uh, overweight influencers on TikTok. Oh, and that yeah. was one of the terms he used. Like more temporary than usual. That's very funny. Like eating this way will make you more temporary. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you also fail to move as much. Sure. You also fail to fit in seats. Because like, yeah, maybe if... It, it, I don't think a 300 pound person could fit in the chair I'm using. It's just a standard gaming chair. Sure, you're right. You're correct. True, true. It's also because like someone who's 300 pounds would be over double my weight because yeah. I weighed myself today. If we minus the pound of bacon I ate, because this was after, <laughs> it would, I would be 125. <laughs> so you were 126 pounds today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so to summarize, basically you feel all kids generally and teens in America should be eating like a ketogenic sort of diet because we're all fat it's too much overweightness well, well it depends because like if you don't have any underlying problems with the diet that you eat because like yeah. i know there's people who there's this kid on my cross-country team um but basically this this kid eats like a 300 pound person would but he's as skinny as me okay i understand that catches so, up and with you. Just a yeah, there's just a few people out there yeah. who can pull that off. And if you don't have sure. any underlying problems, then, I mean, don't make – well, I'm not saying don't make any changes because, like, there's always ways to improve. Sure. But it's just do what's best for you, and maybe that includes not going to McDonald's every day, mm -hmm. three times a day. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. I will say uh, my son is very skinny also. Uh, and we went to the States. By the way, I live in Columbia. I'm not in the U.S., but I'm from Chicago. And we visited home last year, and we went to McDonald's a lot, and it was a bad idea. And Jacob asked me if we could try McDonald's because he'd never eaten it before, which is not true. I think he ate it once or twice in his whole life. Once or Can you imagine eating McDonald's by the time you're seven once or twice in your whole life? But then I, he uh, – yeah. I, at 11 – only ate McDonald's once in my entire life. Oh, you are great. That That's is great. So not true. <laughs> when did I literally only have one memory of eating McDonald's? That's and that one was when... memory. I used to. I used to. I was a bad mom. Literally. I was giving you chicken nuggets and keeping you quiet with chicken Chick -fil -A? nuggets and French fries. No, 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 McDonald's. McDonald's. Yes. No. Literally, when I literally don't remember any of that. <laughs> you were a baby. <laughs> but I'll just well, say the, the end of my story. Baby. You made you were a fast food, food baby. baby. Yep. Sorry. I was a fast food baby. I'm sure. I feel like I was. But anyway, so I took my son there often and we ate that and Chinese and, you know, just a bunch of stuff. He, he got fat in two weeks. He was chubby in like weeks. He looked like a totally different child. And I'm like, this is really a disaster because if we keep eating this way, he's going to be obese in no time. So we got home, went back on the regular food that he eats more natural and he lost all the weight. So yeah, I agree with you that kids should eat healthy, should eat healthy and maybe not eat McDonald's three times a day. <laughs> I can agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about what? What's your take for anyone with autism on eating a ketogenic sort of diet? Um, Try it out. Give it six months. It will benefit your life. Awesome. Because you're not going to feel the effects immediately, but you will feel the effects. And it's like magic. Great. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the end of it. It's like magic. <laughs> it's like magic and stop. <laughs> Period. Full stop. <laughs> yep. Awesome. So, I mean, that's all I got. But do you have any questions for me? Um. Not that I prepared you. Not that I told you to come up with questions, so. I don't think my whiteboard has any questions. 
<laughs> no, it doesn't. I can't see any. <laughs> That's also clear. Although, do put this in. I do want to put in some context for the comment section I was talking about, the one about sure. visual venture. Sure. Um, all those people who had autism were complaining yeah. about ABA therapy. Because What's that? It's basically what teaches you to like mask yourself. And oh, I forgot. Okay. I forgot to put that in. We probably shouldn't forget to put in ABA therapy because that's a big reason on why I conquered my autism the way it is. It's just the keto diet was the nail in the coffin. Like mm -hmm. bye bye. Not problems. the nail in the coffin. I wasn't saying the bye nail bye problems. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> the but, nail in the coffin of the problems, maybe. Yeah. But, no, ABA therapy is stands for Applied Behavioral Analysis. Okay. It is. Um, so have you ever watched Criminal Minds? No, but I think I might now. <laughs> okay. So Criminal Minds, they have board certified behavioral analysts that um, profile the criminal mind. Well, in school, you have two, cho two like the way I was explained uh, by the, the BCBA is that you have two paths you can go. You can go the criminal mind. Or yeah. you can go the developmental mind. Oh, okay. And so, you know, they go and they learn how to teach kids with autism because it is like they just don't learn the same way. Oh, the neural okay. connections are just different. Okay. So they do different training. Like one of the ones like that Audrey needed really big was um, – Idioms, learning what an idiom was. Oh, okay. So I it's I mean, that's raining rough. cats and dogs. Yeah, it's that's like, rough. It's raining cats and dogs, and they'd be like, "Sure." Like no, there are um, not cats and dogs falling from the sky, mom. You know, right? So, okay. You know, so it's like teaching them the different things, teaching them to recognize facial expressions, teaching them to. Um, they did life skills you know, okay. and things and problem solving skills, maths, they worked with math in kids that needed math help. And, okay. you know, um, etiquette, Audrey really liked etiquette. So she learned etiquette skills, like, you know, so you set your teacup like this, and you set a place setting like this, and like different things. And, okay. you know, with Jacob, I can't remember what they worked on with Jacob. I think it was like turn taking type stuff, you know, working in a group with others. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is really my last question. Yeah. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what percentage has your, can you give me like a percentage of how much your life has improved from eating this way? Whatever your, your idea of that is. 70%. 70% better. Hey, 70%. Well, it's not 70% better, but 70% of the improvement made my life is like seven times better. Seven times better yeah. since eating this way. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, that's great. That is awesome. Like your quality of life is improved by seven times. Yeah. Mainly okay. weight loss. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's good.